Hey everyone, how are you doing today? This is Omoza from Team 5795 Back to Drawing Board and I'm here with another video going over a build I did uh, recently on a device called a Continuum Arm. A Continuum Arm is a special kind of robotics arm as it doesn't have a rigid assembly like other classical arms and we'll be going over uh, how it works, what it looks like, and how you can make it yourself. And so stick around for the video and hopefully you can make your own and maybe you'll find uh, certain interesting applications for it, whether it be on a robot that you made or just any other use that you may find. As I just said, a continuum arm is a flexible robotic arm that is built from less rigid parts and so its assembly is much more versatile, it has much more degrees of freedom in terms of movement and rotation compared to a rigid arm. As you can see from this image that displays a uh, more advanced industrial uh, continuum arm, it is almost like a snake or a tentacle and uh, as a result it is given a lot more uh, freedom of movement and it can be used in multiple purposes. You know, you don't need a rigid uh, robot arm stuck on a turret style mechanism, you just need uh, a continuum arm attached to a foundation plate and then uh, give it the range of motion it needs, give it the controls, and you have a fairly free robot arm. And uh, in this case, you know, something like this, given the picture, this could probably be used for simply moving optics around, although you can also add other things to the end of it. But let's go over what it is, or what are the parts of it. And after that, you can see how you can make it, as this is a fairly complex design and it's really industrial, but the uh, build I made, very simple, took me a day, uh, less than that. And it was also fairly inexpensive, uh, if you have all the proper tools, that is. So let's get started and uh, let's check out how we can build this. As you can see on the diagram on the right, here is a basic structure for the fundamental parts of a continuum arm. Most continuum arm mechanisms will use this structure, although the complexity can vary. Obviously we saw uh, in the previous picture that there was a very uh, complex continuum arm, although this one looks pretty simple and in fact is the basic structure of the build I used. However, there are other continuum arm structures that use different basic mechanisms like air pressure, although that's a little bit complicated. To go over the actual parts, let's start off with the backbone, or the spine as it's called. As you can see in the diagram, it's the center rod going through uh, the arm. It provides the structural support and integrity for the uh, mechanism, and it is effectively hold holding everything together, but it also provides the tension, uh, or, sorry, it requires uh, tensile strength in order to resist uh, any pull from object holding and also the stress of being bent. Uh, by the cables, which are the next part. The cables are retracting cables that contort the spine in the desired direction. As you can see in the photo, the top cables are pulling up while the uh, bottom cables relax, and that uh, freedom gives them the ability to stretch and uh, curve the arm upwards. And uh, you know, if you have a system where you can spool your lines together and have motors attached, you can uh, develop an algorithm to control the continuum arm's movement fairly easily. That will be an interesting project that we may possibly do in the future, so check that out. To go into the uh, next parts, we have the spacing disks, which are simply just the disks to ensure that the cables are properly uh, positioned and making sure that they don't get too close to the spine, too far away, and also prevent them from being tangled with each other. And in the end, this isn't really as a specific part, it's the last spacing disc on the uh, continuum arm, which is the, the tip. It, there isn't really a name for it, but you can use it to mount various mechanisms. Like in the picture we saw earlier, there was a claw on it. You can use it for a pointer, mechanical finger, or you know, marker if that's what you decide to use it for. Although having a uh, controller driven robot that can write stuff for you is a very interesting uh, thought, uh, thought experiment and maybe possibly build. We'll see about that. So let's get started on the overview of what it would take to actually build uh, this simple continuum arm mechanism that I built. So uh, look, starting off with the materials, you're going to need uh, PVC pipe, some string, uh, whatever filament you choose, uh, PLA, PETG, ABS, those three work best, I used PLA, as well as some electrical tape. And then the tools, uh, handsaw or any PVC cutter will work, shear scissors, although if you have the PVC cutter too, you can use that. Obviously a 3D printer, and then uh, I also used a uh, hot glue gun. 
And then have some marking tool like a, a pencil or sorry, pen or marker will work best. Something to note about the materials with the PVC pipe, make sure you get uh, a PVC pipe that is fairly easy to bend, but also not uh, so easy to bend that it won't return to the original position. Because if it's too rigid, you can't really use it uh, because it'll become more brittle. The force needed to bend it will also be enough to snap it. And if it's too flimsy, then it A, can't support itself, and B, uh, won't be able to return to a straight position once the forces from the cables are uh, relieved. So just keep that in mind when you're searching for materials if you're going to build this on your own. If you are following my build to pretty much the exact sort of specifications that I've used in my design, then you can take the STL file that I have below in the description and go ahead and print that out. Uh, and you could also go into any CAD software and change the specifications uh, however you like if, for example, you have a wider spine or uh, you know thinner string or whatever you may want. Next thing we're going to do with this build is you're going to take your string and your PVC and cut it to your desired length. Uh, just remember you're going to want uh, extra length to cut off later so go a little bit longer as opposed to a little shorter. And um, the length of the arm is determined by the length of the spine so if your continuum arm, uh, whatever measurement you have it at, that's how long the spine will be. Uh, although if you are putting something on the end of the tip and you want to count that in the overall length, make sure you do account for that and cut your arm a little bit shorter. And the length of the overall string should always be longer than that of the spine so that uh, it reaches past the spine and also you have enough length to wrap around a spool if you need it. A good rule that I've used in my build was uh, double the length of the spine for the string. And so you can do that too. But again, uh, once you get a little bit longer than this, spine itself it doesn't really matter but don't forget that because uh, when you retract one side of the cable you need to give extra length on the other side and you want to make sure you have enough length that the string doesn't become too tight or get pulled out of whatever spool or uh, housing system you have so keep that in mind once you have all your parts ready and ready for assembly you should go ahead and mark where you want to place your continuum disc along the spine to ensure even spacing as uneven spacing can cause the spine to bend uh, in larger gaps as opposed to smaller gaps. And if you have inconsistencies in the rigidity of the continuum arm, it won't bend the way you want. And as a result, it won't work the way uh, you may have desired it to. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, again, always test it out before securing any systems or in, like securing any uh, spacing discs or tying off any strings and whatnot. Uh, but just, you know, going by with a uh, ruler, measuring tape, and a uh, marker will just be enough for that. For my build, I ended up using electrical tape wrapped around the spine where the spacing discs will be placed as a way of securing them uh, on top of hot glue. And uh, this way, if I wanted to, uh, you know, move the spacing discs, I could just, with significant force, twist them off, but uh, it wouldn't be unsecure. Uh, to the point where it would be pulled off by the force of the uh, string or bending of the spine. So this is a fairly secure method. Uh, go ahead and wrap it around the spots you want to place your spacing discs at and uh, wedge your spacing discs on and you can go ahead and hot glue them afterwards. Although that will be more difficult because of the spine flexing so much, uh, certain adhesives may either peel off or if they're really strong could crack uh, your 3D print. It's unlikely to harm the spine itself but uh, you know, it depends on what kind of print you have. The PLA is known to be brittle, so I don't want to worry about adhesives, or especially if any solvents, but hot glue isn't that, but it can be peeled off pretty easily. And I just didn't want to worry about that. So I just uh, increased the friction and uh, gave the spine a little more width around the spacing discs just to uh, secure them more properly. And uh, it's been working well so far. Once you do have your spacing discs placed uh, place properly along your spine, you want to go ahead and rotate them so all the holes for the strings are aligned. You don't want to have any uh, misaligned holes as what can happen is A, you'll have a lot of friction along the strings and you could possibly rub against uh, the spacing disc too much and uh, knock them off their spacing or you can snap the string. Both are very unlikely to happen but if you're using this a lot that is a possibility and on top of that it again will cause more issues with how smoothly the continuum arm operates and bends. And you don't want to worry about that because if you're pulling a certain string, you want to know what direction it's going in. And if it's not aligned properly, then certain parts of the arm will be bending in different directions. And 
that uh, is not something we want to deal with. And it's a quick, easy solution. Make sure they're all aligned before uh, securing them if, if you're going to use hot glue or whatnot. Uh, and even then, in my situation with the electrical tape, the electrical tape was secure enough that uh, using the continuum arm itself, bending the strings, and uh, you know maybe even holding some weight on the end didn't really wedge the or uh, knock the spacing discs off or rotate them too much. But uh, with enough force by hand, I could readjust them as needed, so it works out for me. Now that I have all them secured, I did end up placing a hot glue on the first and the last spacing discs just to make sure that they are secure as those won't be seeing as much flex given that they're on the very ends. And uh, after that, I ended up running through all the strings, tying them off on the ends. And a uh, tip when using certain strings is you can actually take a flame and uh, melt the ends to prevent me fraying, which should... Uh, be done as uh, fraying can pull apart the strings and it can cause a big mess and uh, possibly unravel uh, the string down the line and you don't want to deal with that on any mechanism so uh, that can be something you can go ahead and do and on top of that uh, securing the end spacing discs with hot glue can prevent them from going uh, wedging up and down especially on the one at the very end as it could possibly slip off uh, I never had that issue with hot glue uh, on this arm so it's been working pretty well for me and uh, I'd recommend it. As I said earlier, continuum arms and robotic arms in general often have some sort of mechanism or device placed on the end of them and uh, you can use that on the end spacing disc or the tip of the mechanism or continuum arm sorry here and uh, you can mount grabbers, a mechanical finger, pointers, markers even and uh, whatever you want, I've opted out of that right now, but I will possibly add either a marker or a laser pointer, uh, just so it can be used for demonstration purposes. Uh, uh, grabber works really well for this, given that the flexibility and degrees of freedom for the arm allow it to move in various directions, and you can efficiently uh, move objects with this arm. But uh, that's pretty much it for the build. It's fairly fun to use, uh, fairly secure. And I will do a, a live demonstration of it in the future once I'm able to get it mounted uh, on a mountain I'm building. But other than that, that should be it for this build. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And enjoy this quick animation of what the arms look like if it was bent properly. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Love from 5795. Back to the drawing board. And keep on learning.